Let me start by asking you all a question. How many of you here have ever injured yourself? <laughs> if you've ever fallen down and scraped a knee or twisted an ankle, maybe strained your back or got a paper cut or a splinter or something like that, please raise your hand now and keep it up for a moment. <laughs> Great. Now, all those of you who've healed from your injury, please put your hand down now. But if you're still suffering from a chronic old injury, please keep your hand up for a moment. Great, thank you. You can all put your hands down now. All those of you who've healed from a prior injury have experienced firsthand the healing power of stem cells. How? Because all tissue repair in the body is initiated by stem cells. And in the words of Dr. Harry Adelson, an orthopedic stem cell specialist, anytime you have healing after an injury, it's a stem cell mediated event. Now, those of you who are still suffering from a prior injury, your pain or loss of function is due to the fact that either you do not have enough stem cells to fully heal the damaged area, or the stem cells that you do have are simply not functioning optimally. But here's the good news. There are other areas of your body where you have plenty of stem cells that are functioning beautifully. For example, the bone marrow or your adipose tissue. That's fat tissue. Does anybody here have a little extra fat they'd like to get rid of? <laughs> Most of us do. And if you take the stem cells from that fat where they are plentiful and you transplant them to an area of the body where they're in short supply, then a tremendous amount of healing can occur. And this is the essence of what we call regenerative medicine, utilizing the body's own stem cells or stem cells from an outside source, like the umbilical cord or amniotic tissue of a healthy baby delivery in order to stimulate tissue healing and repair. Now, as a family doctor for over 35 years, I've seen the positive results of stem cell therapy in my own practice and in reviews of the current literature. And I truly believe that the next great advance in medical care will not be a magic pill. It will be a miraculous cell called the MSC, the mesenchymal stem cell, and it will change the landscape of medicine as we know it. Over 30 years ago, Dr. Bernie Siegel, the Yale author and surgeon, used to say, as a surgeon, I cut into the body and I rely on it to heal. I don't have to yell into the wound and tell it how. <laughs> he understood that the healing system lies within us. What he didn't know at the time is that it is the MSC, that mesenchymal stem cell, that is the conductor of that healing system, and it initiates and orchestrates the healing process. Now in this slide, you can see the MSCs are the, are the pink cells here lining the capillary bed. And most remarkably, the reason Dr. Siegel never had to yell into a wound and tell it how to heal is because the MSCs yell into the wound for him. They don't use regular words, of course. They use chemical words called signaling molecules. And these are natural drug-like compounds that stimulate tissue healing. Now, whenever there's damage in the body, these pink cells, the MSCs, go to the damaged area and they survey the area. They begin to collect data and they communicate with the other cells in that area. And then they intelligently respond by releasing a variety, <coughs> excuse me, by releasing a variety of drug-like molecules that initiate tissue healing and repair. This is why Dr. Arnold Kaplan, who's a, a stem cell researcher at Case Western Reserve, says that the MSC is an injury-specific drugstore. Because if you take an MSC and you put it in a damaged, injured knee, it will produce very different drug-like molecules than if you take that same MSC and you put it in an inflamed lung or a damaged liver. That's because MSCs are stem cells that are data-driven from the local information, they're intelligently responsive to that information, and they're injury-specific drugstores. Now, where do these drugstores exist in the human body? 
Well, they exist in an area that we call the universal stem cell niche. And that's where all tissue healing and repair occur. Now, in order to explain this concept to you, I had to create a fairly complex medical slide. So be patient with me. I promise I'll walk you through it slowly. And even those of you who just don't get science will, will get it, I promise. So here it is, the universal stem cell niche. Okay, I'm kidding, it's not a complex slide. But I wanna point out a couple of things. The universal stem cell niche is simply the location, it's the concert hall, if you will, where all the members of this healing system Philharmonic Orchestra play. Now, leading the orchestra is the MSC who waves the baton and sends these signaling molecules to all the members of the orchestra to ensure that they play their parts, that is, they do the healing to the best of their ability. Now, here in the front section, we have the stringed instruments, which are the progenitor cells. These are called tissue-specific stem cells. And every organ in the body has progenitor cells that only create cells unique to that organ. So for example, this um, bone progenitor cell only creates new bone cells. And the heart progenitor cell only creates new heart cells. And the same is true for every organ in the body. Now, in the middle section where the woodwinds and brass are, we have the vascular players. These are the capillaries, the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets that carry all the healing elements to the body and to the damaged tissue. And lastly, we have the pericytes. This is the percussion section. These pericytes are those pink cells you saw in that electron micrograph. And they have these little finger-like projections that go onto the capillary wall, and they monitor, they keep their finger on the pulse, the rhythm, the beat of the local scene. And whenever there's damage, they break off, they go to the conductor's podium, and they recruit a whole new healing system orchestra to initiate tissue healing and repair. Now, the universal stem cell niche is so vital to our well-being that in the words of Dr. Kristen Camella, a leading stem cell scientist, if you didn't have stem cells, you could only live for about an hour. Now, as amazing as that fact is, even more amazing is the fact that these stem cells are helping real patients in real-life medical situations get well. One of my favorite quotes of all time comes from the American poet Muriel Rukeyser, who said, the universe is made of stories, not of atoms. So I want to tell you Jim W's story. Jim first came to me in August of last year, complaining he needed a preoperative clearance for a left hip. He needed a total hip replacement. Now, he had been having a lot of pain, a lot of clicking, and he could no longer walk his dog, Honey, so he was miserable. Now, a year before, he had had a total hip replacement in his right hip, and that recovery was complicated by an infection and it took him over three months to heal, and he was miserable during that time. So when I mentioned to him the possibility of doing stem cell therapy, he was interested, but he was a little skeptical because um, his doctor had told him his hip was bone on bone. So he said only surgery is gonna work. Nevertheless, he was willing to give it a try. So under ultrasound guidance, I injected about 8 million MSC stem cells into his left hip. The whole procedure only took about 15 minutes. It hurts no more than a, a blood draw, basically. And we put a Band-Aid on, and Jim walked home. And I said to him, Jim, be patient. It takes about three to four months to see results. Well, at the three-month point, I saw Jim, and he was a little discouraged. He was only about 25% better. But I said to him, Jim, be patient. Let's give it a little longer. So in February of this year, at the six-month point, I saw Jim again, and he was ecstatic. He was in virtually no pain. 
He could barely tell the difference between the left hip and the right hip, and most importantly, he was able to take his dog, Honey, out on 45-minute walks pain-free. Now, Jim's a little camera shy, but I was able to catch this photo of him <laughs> back on the happy trail with Honey again. <laughs> now, let me show you what happened inside Jim's hip when we put those stem cells in. What happened is the stem cells go up to the conductor's podium, they assess the area, they assess the damage, and then they send these signaling molecules to the progenitor cells, to the tissue-specific bone stem cells and cartilage stem cells that exist in that area, and they've always existed in that area. The problem is, as we get older, they decrease in number, and then, with wear and tear, Sometimes they get a little sleepy and tired, and they get weak and weary, and they lay down and take a nap. So when we put those MSCs in, they awaken Jim's napping progenitor stem cells, they re-energize them, and they come to life, and they start creating new cartilage, new bone, new ligaments that lead to the growth and repair of that hip. Now, stem cells don't only work in, area, in aging, um, painful joints. They also work in any, con any time in the body where there's excess inflammation, immune system problems, or wear and tear. Now, this is a list of clinical trials being um, studied by Dr. Neil Reardon, uh, an author and stem cell researcher down in Panama, all with very positive results. And when you see this list of seemingly diverse conditions, all responding well to MSC therapy, everything from autism to asthma to osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, spinal cord injury, you begin to appreciate the power of the MSC to awaken our healing system. Now, I want to tell you one other example of how stem cells have helped patients with diabetes prevent pain and suffering. In this study by Dr. Prochazka at the University Hospital in Ostrava in the Czech Republic, he studied 96 patients with what we call critical limb ischemia. That's low blood flow to the feet. And he divided these patients up into two groups. Now, mind you, all these patients were at risk for amputation because diabetics easily get in little cuts on the bottom of their feet, that can get infected, it can spread to the bone, and often necessitate an amputation. So in the first group, the patients were given stem cells, and these stem cells were taken from their bone marrow, and they were injected along the leg here and along the foot ulcer base. And in that group of patients, 79% went on to heal completely by the 90-day point. Unfortunately, 21% of those patients did require an amputation. Now, in the group two that did not receive stem cells, 44% of them required an amputation. That's over twice as many patients needing an amputation that could have been entirely prevented by a single stem cell injection in a procedure that basically took an hour and a half to complete. Now, I want to show you what happened beneath the sur or, or on the foot first with this critical limb ischemia. You can see at day zero this big, wide, gaping wound. By day 30, it's a fraction of what it was. In 90 days, after a single stem cell injection, it's almost completely healed. Now, if you look beneath the surface at the blood flow, what we have here is called an angiogram. This is a picture of the blood vessels that go down to the feet. On the left here, this is the, the foot's down here, and this is the top of the leg, the calf. You see what this is before stem cells. It looks like a little country road or two, barely carrying any blood down to the foot. Now, 90 days after a single stem cell injection, what you see here looks like a major metropolitan freeway system, carrying massive amounts of blood down to the feet. And remember, the MSC not only heals tissue, but it's also what we call angiogenic. It stimulates new blood vessel formation. And because these MSCs like to live along the capillaries, the more blood flow you have, the more stem cells. The more stem cells, the better the healing, the better your health. I want to leave you with a quote from one of my personal heroes, Norman Cousins, 
who used to say, the doctor has a role beyond the prescription pad to invoke the patient's own bodily resources for healing. What this means is we need to just stop throwing a drug at every problem. We need to learn how to harness the regenerative powers of our own healing system, not only through advanced stem cell technologies, but also through better nutrition, better lifestyle choices, better stress management, and living a life of contribution, purpose, and meaning. But it's up to each and every one of us to get the word out about stem cells. Why? Because no drug company or surgical device company is going to tell you about all the benefits of stem cell therapy because it disrupts their industry. It eats into their market share and their profits. So there's not going to be any fancy TV ads or print ads telling you all about the amazing benefits of stem cell therapy. The task is ours. It's up to us. But if we rise up to that task, this is what the future holds. Every patient with heart attack or stroke will immediately receive a series of MSC infusions that will help minimize scarring of the heart and limit the neurological damage and disability. Every child with autism will receive a series of MSC infusions that will help reverse the inflammation in their brain and help reintegrate that child into a healthy, normal life. And every patient with autoimmune disease whether it's diabetes, lupus, MS, or rheumatoid, will receive a series of MSC infusions that will help reset their immune system at the root cause level and help them to minimize their exposure to dangerous drugs and dangerous side effects. There's an ancient teaching that says, whoever saves a single life, it's as if they saved the entire world. So please share this information with just one loved one, one coworker, one family member who may benefit from stem cell therapy. And together, let's help save just one person's life. Let's help alleviate just one person's suffering, and let's help make a better, healthier world through the promise and the proof of stem cell therapy. Thank you.